You know that moment when you watch a movie and you're like, wow, that car is awesome. I could do that, right? Or you think you could do it, but then you realize, okay, maybe I can't. Well, maybe I could get to that level. But the reality is a lot of those cars are modified for the movie, right? So guys, I'm going to reveal to you the truth behind several movies, just a couple movies. Um, and I'm going to show you what it really took to modify those cars so that they could perform that way for the movie. So I'm going to kind of demystify and kind of maybe change your mind a little bit or kind of just give you, hey, this is what it's going to take if you want to be able to drive a car like that in the movies, right? So let's talk about it. Okay guys, so I'm excited to like kind of give you this information. Um, if you don't know anything about who I am um, or your first time watching it, I am the owner of Mod Bargains, I'm the CEO, but I've been doing this for 17 years. So uh, we ship products all across the US, across the world, we modify cars, um, we work on cars here, and yeah, we have a very big online presence. We started back in the days when Amazon started. Several months ago, uh, I was reached out to me by, they reached out to me. It was a UK based type of magazine. I think it was Evolve and they were doing something for Money Shakedown. Anyway, they asked me to like collaborate with them. And I kind of thought it'd be a good idea to create a video about it where they were asking me, hey, what does it cost? And what really went into making some of these cars? That's what I'm going to go into, and it's going to be uh, several different movies, very, very popular, especially in the car movie uh, genre that we all like. And uh, I'll jump into the first one, the most obvious one that you guys all know. It's the Fast and Furious. Uh, this is what they asked me, and I think it's a good one. It's Dominic Toretto's Dodge Charger. So in the movie, if you watch it, um, he opens up his garage and he's showing Paul Walker, Vin Diesel shows Paul Walker, and it's a 1970 Dodge Charger. Now, that car, if you were to try to make one yourself, um, or try to get one of those, it's pretty expensive. Just a donor car. What I mean a donor car is just a chassis and the basic, you know, body, not the, not the car that's built out, right? It's going to cost you about fifty to seventy thousand in general. So um, that car, if you were to just buy one of those, it would get sent to what's called a resto mod shop, and basically they would remove every single component. They would redo the chassis. They would um, re-strengthen it. Uh, they build a, do a full motor build. Um, it'd be a brand new motor, new drivetrain, body tub, custom wheels. Obviously, is in the movie. Uh, they had race slicks tires on there so to grip more. And they added a cage. Uh, you can see that there's a cage in there. They added race seats. They did an interior. There's harness. Labor time, on average, for most resto mod shops, resto mod shops <laughs> would take about two to three years. Uh, labor costs would probably be about at least three hundred thousand. About two fifty to three hundred, on a I think is a normal price to pay. Could cost more. Car would do nine hundred horses of Detroit muscle. Now. In the movie, he's working on the car himself, and if you're able to do all this work yourself, you saved yourself a bunch of money. You still need to buy all those components, so it's still going to cost you. But that 900 horsepower Dodge Charger that they have in there, that they go off racing, um, that's a quarter mile and nine seconds. So, just as a heads up. All right, next car. This is from the movie Baby Driver. Okay, so in the movie Baby Driver, it kind of looks like the car is just completely stock. And I know it looks like that because that's what they're trying to go for in here. The only thing that you can kind of tell right off the bat is that it's got some wheels on it. And that's about it. And it doesn't look like the guy modifies or works on his car. But in the movie, it's a Subaru Impreza WRX. Now, there's a lot of probably hidden modifications that you don't realize underneath. This is probably very inexpensive. But... Um, so the most obvious one was the cast wheels, they're ICW cast wheels, they cost 700 bucks. But more than likely the car had a tune on it, probably a Cobb tune, just listening to the way the, the, the motor responds. And that's about a thousand dollars. The tune with the intake, I'm just putting it in there. Uh, I'm going to guess just by, the, by listening to it. And um, now the car in the movie is constantly sliding, he's doing like crazy maneuvers, obviously he's in a hands of a professional so don't forget that but um, in order to do that they probably disconnected the deferential 
So, and they added sway bars to keep the stability. If you look at it, the car is extremely stable. So, sway bars, disconnected differential. Uh, they probably upgraded the brake pads, the lines, and the fluid. In terms of the suspension, because you notice that it has some jo uh, jo uh, jumps and stuff like that, that's probably like you see it like jumping off and so forth. That's on a rally spec coilover. So, that's a different type of coilover. So, it's not going for a lowered ride, ride height, but it's actually taking in the impact. So, um, I probably like an AST MCS rally spec coilover, um, also known as a safari suspension sometimes, right? That's probably costing them about 4,000 with labor, all that, probably about 6,700. So on total, the car is probably going to be about $8,000. Uh, the Impreza is just shy of 300 horsepower, not a crazy horsepower car, but if you put it into a talented driver, so if you're that talented, I guess you could move around and, you know, rob banks just like they did, so. Pretty cool car. Um, I like the way they did that one. Very, very subdued. It's a sleeper, um, you know, pretty cool. Now, the next one. This one's really famous. Uh, this is the most famous of all. One of my, you know, fictional heroes is James Bond, right? and uh, he's always driving those cars. So in the new movie, No Time to Die, James Bond is driving the Aston Martin DB5. So the DB5 is a classic old car, right? Uh, there is just no way um, that he could drive that car. There's just no way that car performs that way. So um, in order to do this, they had to make a car from scratch. They didn't even make it, they didn't even have this car, right? So this is a completely built from scratch car, a special chassis, probably carbon fiber, had to be super lightweight because you're constantly tossing this around. Um, and it, it was, I uh, ended up researching this one quite a bit. So it was a 2,200 pound vehicle. That's half the weight of today's modern vehicles. Um, the suspension was changed from a live axle in the old days uh, to a completely modern day suspension. Uh, the motor was changed, the old, the old motor is a four cylinder and they put in a, a V6. Uh, all the parts from the original are all gutted, all taken out. Um, basically all you're seeing is a shell put on this car um, and it was basically a one-off. This is a completely built car, carbon fiber chassis, where they took a shell of a DB5 and they put it on and they make you think that it's a DB5, but there is no way a real DB5 could handle that. Now, whether it's old brakes or suspension, a live axle or any of those things. So uh, if you were to get one of these one-off stunt cars, they cost $1.4 million dollars you gotta be kidding me that doesn't include the fancy missiles or the gadgets that q puts into it so uh, i don't know what those cost you but um just if you wanted to get that car and uh if you're a spy and you you're gonna go out there good luck all right guys uh, i want to hear your comments if you like this type of videos um, you know, or wanted me to do some other movies that you guys were interested. You want me to analyze the type of car, what kind of modifications it took, besides the driver, right? Besides being a very skilled driver. Um, leave it in the comments below. Um, you guys know I respond. I try my best to. And uh, if you like this video, hit the, the like. And if you haven't subscribed, please, we, we are very grateful when you do. And I will see you on the next Talking Mods.